Let's talk about New York. Mr. Venn, you can't put up with it. Neither can I. Neither can I. And that's why we've been on this for the entire time that we've been on the air. We've been on it. We've been on it. But New York City itself couldn't handle itself, couldn't manage its own finances, couldn't even fix the trash problem, have a rat problem everywhere. It's horrible. It's absolutely horrible in New York. And it's practically plunging into chaos and insanity. For example, this is one of the few things that happens on a daily basis in the city that y'all love so much that's managed by Eric Adams. Check it out. Gunfire ringing out in the Bronx when gunmen on moped shot and killed one man and injured three others. Yeah, police say there were at least two shooters on two separate scooters. Was this coordinated attack? Are they part of a larger gang? Those are questions investigators are looking at this morning. Good Day's Briella Tomasetti is in the Mount Eden section of the Bronx this morning with the very latest. Briella, good morning. Yeah, Dan and Tashani, good morning to both of you. A lot of questions surrounding this case, but what we do know is that those mopeds, the scooters are becoming a huge problem across pretty much all five boroughs. It's unknown at this point whether the deadly shooting was gang related. Police say they still have to investigate. They are only at the beginning of that investigation. They have vowed to crack down on illegal scooter activity, specifically in this area. Police have also ID'd the 29-year-old victim as Miguel Dole of the Bronx. We heard a lot of blah, 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 maybe eight, maybe ten. Witnesses recalled running for cover the moment gunshots rang out at a busy intersection in the Mount Eden section of the Bronx. One person has died and three others are recovering after the brazen shootout. It all happened on the southwest corner of East Mount Eden Avenue and Townsend Avenue at around 615 yesterday evening. There were two scooters that came eastbound on West Eden, I'm mean, excuse me, Mount Eden, with two males on each scooter abreast. The rear passengers of those scooters pulled out firearms, that's two firearms, and they fired approximately 10 rounds. Four men were shot ranging in age from 23 to 37 years old. Three of them were struck in the leg while a 29-year-old man was hit in the chest and leg. He was rushed to the hospital where he later died. The suspects in the meantime took off northbound on Townsend Avenue toward the Cross Bronx Expressway. The perpetrators wore masks and hoodies to block their identities. We don't have no police activity. We don't have nothing in this avenue. And we need police activity. But the NYPD says it's beefed up its presence in the neighborhood following a recent wave of e-scooter crime. 9,500 scooters. Did they say e-scooter crime? Jesus Christ. We got e-scooter crime? So y'all on electric scooters? So y'all go and charge up y'all scooters before y'all do y'all crimes now? Only in New York. Only in the United States of America and in New York. Dirt bikes and ATVs, we have taken off the street since January 1st to now. Out of those 9,500, 2,500 in the Bronx alone. During that same time period, police made 1,300 arrests and issued 989 summonses involving suspects riding scooters. Officers also took 18 guns off the streets in the 44th and 46th precincts between April 1st and April 9th. As a result of this incident, we're going to be bringing back our community response teams. Those are the officers that you see in the tan pants, and they will be focusing primarily on individuals riding around with uh, illegal scooters, dirt bikes and ATVs. Now, one person was taken into custody here at the scene, but police say that was actually for an unrelated incident. At this point, no other arrests have been made for now. Of course, no other arrests have been made. So shout out to the e-scooter gangs. We don't know who they are riding around with hoodies on. Even if they get caught, we know that they're going to go ahead and get released without bond. And so, yeah, that, that's just New York. But but listen, listen, listen. People are not just riding around doing e-scooter crimes. No, New York is much, much better than that. We also have grown men with wild hair punching kids. Just randomly punching kids. You, oh, you don't believe me? 
Now to some other news. A suspect arrested for punching. A nine-year-old girl at Grand Central has been arraigned and is being held on $100,000 bail. Fox News' Kendall Green spoke with commuters at Grand look Central at them, about what happened. Look at them pretty, look at them pretty girls right there. They need to come and do an interview on Don't Do Coke in the Bathroom. Oh! Don't worry, Tia Marie. I'm still focused. I just wanted to take time out to acknowledge the same way that I acknowledge uh, Fiona with the dress on. I got to acknowledge these ladies right here to make sure that I give them credit where credit is due. We want to be equal accountability partners across the board. They've ever experienced anything similar. Some have seen him around Grand Central Terminal. Have you seen this dude? I'm not going to lie. Probably. While others have it, but it's safe to say he's been an ongoing public safety concern. Police arrested Jean Carlos Zarzuela, accused of punching a nine-year-old girl in the face at Grand Central Terminal Saturday morning. There's always wild things happening. This is New York. Okay. Okay. You just got to be careful. The 30-year-old attacker reportedly sent the little girl to a local hospital, both dizzy and in pain. Now, baristas, shoe shiners, they work here at Grand Central Terminal every day. They tell us they've seen their fair share of incidents, but this latest one certainly raises their eyebrows. All I remember was a big crowd for me, and it was some, some girl was like, he hit me, he hit me. I'm like, oh, someone get hit. And then, like, 20 seconds later, just mad keys, jingling, jingling, jingling. Mad cops running. But I guess he had already dipped over, but it's good to know they caught him, though. But police say the unprovoked attack followed multiple prior arrests, one in particular for allegedly punching an elderly woman on April 4th, less than two weeks before. Regarding that... What is up with... Yeah, yeah. He looked like one of them. Y'all know what one of them are? Do I gotta say it? Do I gotta say it? He looked like one of them. Yeah, yeah, he looked like one of them. Why, do y'all know why suckers like this punch little kids and elderly people? Because they usually look for the path of least resistance. That's why it's important for women to stay under the covering of men because they don't usually attack you when you walk in with another man. When you under the covering of men, when you move in with a man and you, you operate in a way that you're supposed to operate, you then avoid and you are safe, safe as ever. They don't attack you when you would a when you would a man. They don't. They look for the path of least resistance to then do some of the worst things to you. That attack, he was arraigned on charges including assault, reckless endangerment, and harassment, but freed without bail. A lot of the times there is. But free, I want y'all to remember that last part that they said. Let me play it for you again, just so y'all can remember what we got going on in this country. In California, Oakland, San Francisco, New York. I want y'all to remember what they saying. Listen. Assault, reckless endangerment two weeks before. Regarding that attack, he was arraigned on charges including assault, reckless endangerment, and harassment, but freed without bail. But freed without bail. Beaten up on elderly people. Arrested. And freed without bail. No resistance, no problems. Let them on out. Let them be a habitual offender. And then let them go punch on some nine-year-old girl. Free, without bail. This is what Jay-Z advocated for. This is what Meek Mill advocated for. This is what all of your favorite entertainers advocated for. While they living in a fortress that you can't get over to, they said that they want the criminals out on your street and they want you free without bail. I don't know. I have no clue how they out here punching on older people and kicking little kids and assaulting people and they get free without bail. Charges including assault, reckless endangerment, and harassment, but freed without bail. A lot of the times there is a lot of, you know, uh, I'd say people that, you know, homeless people that always wander around here. Yes, they do cause a lot of trouble. And yes, they do kind of frequently, you know, bother us or sometimes, you know, other people too. But it never really gets to the point where it gets too dramatic, like how it happened, you know, over the weekend. At last check, Manhattan District Attorney's Office shared Zarzuela was arraigned on two counts of third degree assault, endangerment of a child, attempted assault and harassment. He's being held on a $100,000 bail. While the attacker's dent on the perception of public safety will far outlast his arrest. My safety concerns is just making sure that I am from building to train, nothing outside of that. Can 
We used to be able to take a little tour in New York, observe, wait, look at the buildings. Oh, my God, look at New York. Empire State Building. Wasn't King Kong up there beating on his chest? You can't do that no more. You got to get straight to where you got to go. Don't look up. Don't pass go. Don't collect $200, none of that. But listen, listen, I don't think that we give in New York the credit that it deserves. I mean, you got black migrants that's out here or black illegal immigrants coming over to this country protesting for y'all to give them more, even though y'all giving them everything. You got people punching little girls and beating up elderly people when they getting out without bail. Honestly, I think that New York get a bad rap. And so the police... And Mayor Eric Adams decided that he wanted to crack down on illegal vendors. Check it out. Well, for the second day in a row, the NYPD raided a strip of illegal vendors in Queens. Mayor Adams says the situation there is a byproduct of the migrant crisis. Lizette Nunez has more from Jackson Heights this morning. What's going on? Were police there earlier today? Yeah, they sure were, Roseanne and Kurt. There was a lot of police patrolling the area here on Roosevelt Avenue. Sorry, it's a little bit loud right now because the train is just going over ahead of me. But yes, a big police presence this morning, and most of those street vendors are believed to be migrants. And the mayor did address that. He believed a lot of these migrants are turning to different ways to make a few bucks because some of them are not legally authorized to work. For the second day in a row, the NYPD has taken down illegal street vendors along Roosevelt Avenue in Jackson Heights, Queens. This is video from Monday's raid, where officers were seen confiscating merchandise, ranging from clothes, jewelry, and power tools. Some of the goods are reportedly stolen. Yesterday, Mayor Adams addressed the issue, which... He well, it's of course it's stolen. How do you think they got it if they don't got no money or if they're not using a debit card for food? trading in a debit card for money and then investing in them. What you think, that they flipping it? Of course it's stolen. How else you think they got it? He believes it's tied to the ongoing migrant crisis. Some of the uh, problems we're facing, you know, in our city, this is the byproduct of bringing thousands of people to a city and telling them they cannot work. This is what we're seeing. Quality of life issues are nothing new in this part of Jackson Heights. Neighbors and businesses have repeatedly complained about prostitution in the area. Mm. Back in January, the NYPD shut down multiple brothels along Roosevelt Avenue. At first glance, they look like massage parlors, but authorities believe prostitution and sex trafficking was taking place in these locations. Ain't nothing like a good old rub and tug, huh, police? Huh, New York? Hey, New York, ain't nothing like a good rub and tug, right? This is what we're seeing. Uh, Councilman Moy and I, some of the uh, illegal shops, uh, sex trafficking uh, that is taking place. All of this is a byproduct. You know, you, I keep telling folks, you, you have 3,000 people on Randall's Island that cannot do anything all day. That's just not right. Yeah, so pretty calm this morning. Here's the thing. When these raids happen, it does spook some of these vendors. So they stop selling for a day or two. But then once things cool down, they see police leave the area. Well, they come back out here and set back up. So this just ends up being a cycle here. That's Liz here from Jackson Heights. Curtin Roseanne and we'll send things back. So New York has officially become Venezuela. New York has officially become the place that they ran from. Yes, 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 yes. Remember they said, hey, we welcome all migrants here. We rocking with it. And now they brought them here. Byron, by, uh, Biden won't address it. And it's just getting worse and worse every single day. Now they selling cootie cat. Bet you ain't heard that word in a long time. Now they selling cootie cat. Yep. Selling Cootie Cat. They call them massage parlors. In the middle of a busy business district. <laughs> Gotta love the city of New York.
If you can't make it in New York, you if you can make it in New York, they say they say that you can make it anywhere. 